So we'll talk about workflow triggers. Today, a release we made a few weeks ago. Workflow triggers in brief, it's all about, all about automating certain actions that create window of opportunity for sales and account managers. And we automate those actions inside your CRM. If you have any questions, comments, um, you can use the chat box um, that you see on, on, on the right. So you can ask any questions, comments, and we also have a group of colleagues. They will, they will check all the other questions and comments that you have, and they will be answered. So workflow triggers, it's not a new innovation at, at Vino. We actually um, already in back in 2013, we sort of built the first PowerPoint uh, deck. Um, the screenshot I know is in Finnish, but basically highlighting that we had this idea that it would be so useful for salespeople and account managers to really stay on top of what's going on with top prospects and uh, top customers and important customers. Because if we have insights at our fingertips, it can be used when we reach out to customers and prospects, and most likely it will improve timing and conversion. Uh, however, the first years, basically up until um, this month, we've been only able to deliver these um, trigger events and these opportunities to email and uh, some collaboration tools. But now we finally also connected workflow triggers with CRM so that you can actually automatically create tasks, leads, deals, opportunities directly into your CRM, which actually makes the whole process a lot easier. So these are results. Um, we, uh, we launched workflow triggers. So it's a feature in Vino um, a few weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, and of course implemented that internally as well. Uh, we basically have two different type of uh, workflow triggers. I'm going to demo both of them um, for you. The one um, that is super simple as a concept is to automatically detect and identify new ideal customers. So as long as you're able to define that these are the companies I want to do business with, we can automatically detect every time when there's a new company uh, that meets the criteria. We use that internally and uh, within the past 10, 11 business days, internally we have detected 107 new ICP, ideal customer profile accounts. And uh, yesterday when I checked the numbers, we already had 30 meetings booked with those with those companies and with decision makers. So that gives us a very nice call to or um, sort of a prospect to meeting rate, which is 28%. And in all honesty, I expect that number still to go up because we have also some ongoing discussions with these with these companies. And this is of course, uh, I, I haven't seen this high number in sort of outbound sales uh, in, in my career. So it, it really seems that timing seems to be good if we can really give always a reason for the customer or prospect why we actually reach out. I'll, I'll demo um, this one in a moment. Uh, but high level concept uh, is that if you spend 15 seconds and really read through the sentence, I think as long as you're able to complete this sentence, then most likely workflow triggers is useful for you. Because at the end of the day, it's all about first defining a group of companies you want to focus on, group of companies you want to keep an eye on. Then you define some sort of change that is important for you. It could be a decision maker change. It could be uh, that a customer files new revenue numbers or financial statement, or it could be a positive trigger event such as a funding round or expansion announcement. But there's a group of companies and you define uh, a certain trigger event. Then we create automated actions. We create often, for example, a task or lead or deal or opportunity in your CRM. And then you can also even uh, specify what type of information you want to see in that task or deal or opportunity so that it's as easy and as automated as possible for salespeople and CS people to take uh, to act on these trigger events. So that's, that's really, the, really the concept. Uh, three use cases or 
that I want to uh, demo to you today as well. First one is the one that I already mentioned. We can automate new business prospecting as long as you're able to define your ideal customer profile whenever Vino detects a new company that meets the criteria, we can create a task or deal or opportunity for your team. Very simple, very effective, and uh, uh, it's not only about increasing level of automation, it's actually automating the whole, whole process. Then number two, also something that I'll, I'll demo today. This one goes to those accounts and customers that you already know, so it's not about finding new ones. It's about finding an ideal timing with, or with, with uh, known prospects and known customers. Here we have lots of options for you, up to like 70 plus uh, different type of trigger events. I, I'll, I'll today show you a couple of uh, very common ones that are sort of useful in all industries. Of course, then it depends on the, on, on, on the product you sell and, and the customers you sell, which trigger event is the most full, uh, useful uh, for you. But this is also about sort of automating the process that you, you keep an eye on, the companies you want to do business with, and we also create tasks for the team. And there's always uh, lots of context that we bring in with these uh, tasks and, and deals so that your sales team, your account managers, they always have a good reason to be in touch with companies. Because it really works. Um, Felix is one of our uh, SDRs. So in the team that is uh, making sure that Bainu always has lots of high quality meetings lined up for the up, up and coming weeks. So he's doing one of the most challenging uh, roles that I think there is in B2B sales, which is about making sure that our AEs, account executives, have calendars full of meetings and good meetings with right people and a solid discovery phase done. And we've been using workflow triggers now for 11, 12 days and just spoke with him yesterday. He has done fantastic results. And also uh, the feedback he's getting from customers when we, when we go after uh, the new ones and actually have good reasons to be in touch. For example, we might mention that, hey, we just saw that you implemented HubSpot uh, in your company or we we see that you're in the process of uh, starting to use Salesforce. That's the reason why we reach out to you at this at this moment. Then the feedback is very good because uh, the prospects and customers immediately understand that we have done our homework. It's not that we just randomly call out of blue, but we actually have a reason uh, behind the outreach. And then finally, because we have connected workflow triggers with um, your CRM, we can actually reduce lots of manual tasks. Uh, you, can, you can connect workflow triggers with HubSpot, Salesforce, Dynamics 365, and Pipedrive right away inside um, Bino platform, and, and uh, super easy to do the settings I'll show you in a, in a moment. So I think we can jump into a demo. I want to ask one more, one more question just so that I manage the expectation a little bit. Um, Oh, because I'm going to do a demo. I just want to know if you have used Vino before. Like, if I need to go into the very basics or not. I expect, and at least when I checked the list of people joining this morning, I recognized many names and many companies. So I would imagine most of you have actually used Vino already and our existing customers. Well, that's exactly the case. So 97% already know Vino, so that's useful to know. All right, then I need to find a demo account. Just a second. And I need to hide the results, go back to screen share. And uh, maybe one of my colleagues can send me a quick Slack message and confirm that you see Vainu platform. Excellent. Very good. Very good. So I'll, I'm going to demo those two things that I mentioned and then the settings. Um, 
if we want to automate prospecting, first we need to actually define our um, ideal customer profile. So let's assume that I'm a Swedish, Swedish account executive and uh, I want to target specific e-commerce uh, companies. And then we could also say that in, in Stockholm, my region is, is Gothenburg and uh, Jönköping, for example. So first, what I'll do, I have first uh, all, this, all the Swedish companies uh, here. So I need to define the search and filter down the results so that I have my ICP here. So I'll go into the filters. I'm using this Bino Custom Industry. It's such a great way to find segments because you might know that it's very difficult to use standard industry codes these days. We want to find modern industries such as fintech or uh, blockchain or artificial intelligence. Same goes to e-commerce. So I want to find companies that are in e-commerce, but then I want to be very specific what type of e-commerce companies. So I'm selecting beauty, home decor, and jewelry. And now I'll do the search that it has to be an e-commerce company and then it, sort of the main main segment that they focus on is one of these three beauty home decor or jewelry so i'm doing the search and then of course the results uh, go down because i have less companies meeting the uh, meeting the search criteria let's see it's still quite a few more than three thousand so i could activate very briefly a revenue filter so that i only go after companies that have more than well let's put 50 million in, in revenue and then if i'm in gothenburg i guess i need location filter so it has to be let's see that i also get in jepping so i'm having a little bit bigger region and then i apply so now i have my list ready and then we simply save changes as well and this is the list that I'm focusing on, all companies, e-commerce businesses, certain revenue figures, and uh, exactly in the region, located in the region that I'm interested in. So I'm saving the list, and then I can go to workflow triggers. So it's this new feature on the left that you can see on the, on the menu bar on the left, and then I create a new trigger. First, I select, so now I'm, creating that trigger that automates new business prospecting. So every time when there's a new company that meets that ICP, ideal customer profile definition that I just did, I want to have uh, a task or deal in my, in my CRM. So first, it was something with Mikko. I believe this one was the, the one we just created. So I'm using that list. So that's my source. Then filter. It's super easy. It's other new company in a target group that's it obviously we won't see any yet because we just created the search so we have to wait until we have new ones then this is the important one now we de define the destination for these trigger events so every time there's a new company in that saved list then i can select where i want that information to go of course if needed you can send them to email you could connect your slack or collaboration tool and, and put them into a certain channel you can use webhook as well but i think this is the new new thing that now you can actually put them in in crm i connected hubspot with this demo account and then in export settings i can select if i want to create a deal right away or if i just want to create a task so every time when there's a new company in sweden in the region of gothenburg and Jönköping that we have uh, detected that they operate in the field of e-commerce selling one of those um, product categories that I showed, home decor and beauty and so on. So if I create always a deal, I can also check my data mapping. So now I would always create a deal. I could select if I also want to export and create an account, meaning that I export company at the same time. So that in HubSpot, I also create a new, new company. If I want to also, uh, export a note maybe it could be something a reminder for myself that hey uh, do xyz when this happens something like that and then you can even check the data mapping right away here so we have 
this connector live so you can do the data mapping right away so that the right information goes to the right place in HubSpot. I think this is the only place where you actually need uh, to pay a little bit of attention because it's very important that you define the right, um, so you sort of map the right data fields in Vinu to the right data fields in your CRM. In this case, for example, if we create a deal, we of course need a deal name and deal description, and we use these trigger event titles and content for that. If we selected that we want to create a task instead, then we would do the mapping here. So we'd focus on the task object in HubSpot and do the same type of mapping. But it's super intuitive user interface and um, really gives you flexibility to create exactly the type of actions you want inside your CRM. And we have this connector um, mapping user interface available for Salesforce, HubSpot, Dynamics, and uh, Pipedrive at the moment. So that's, that's the first example, um, which is automating new ICP companies and uh, creating tasks based on that. Then I'll cancel this one. Then I'll show you the second example. So now we focus on companies that we already know. So I'm, I'm creating a new one. Uh, I believe I created yesterday an example where I have all the Finnish fintech companies. So let's say I want to sell to companies that have something to do with fintech. So there's quite a few, quite a few uh, companies in that in that list. I save that list. Then everything else is similar. Selecting destination and um, other other settings but now instead of choosing this new company in a target group i most likely want to focus on specific events and you can uh, select the events here we have categorized them into a few main categories for example if you if it's really about financial development if for example every time when any of your key accounts files a new financial statement Maybe you want to be very customer centric and really showcase that you care about your customers and when they file annual reports and financial statements, you want your account manager to actually take a look at those uh, reports. There's lots of insights as we all know in those filings. We could select this one, new financial statement, meaning that every time when any of those FinTech companies in Finland, when they file a new financial statement, the account owner would be notified. If we select CRM as a destination, they would see, for example, a task. Take a look at the latest financial uh, statement of company XYZ, which is one of your key accounts. So it's very, very simple. Uh, more than 70 options here. The most typical ones, of course, I think, regardless of the industry you're in, Regardless of the industry you're in, I would always recommend your key account managers, account managers, and uh, AEs, sales managers, to track important decision maker changes. So, for example, if your key account is appointing a new CEO, for example, important that we follow and monitor that one. Uh, then, financial development. I think the the example of new financial statement. It's such a good source for insights. When you actually open up financial statement annual reports, often there's lots of comments about uh, strategy, uh, the outlook. There might be a message from the CEO. So it's such a good way to know what are the sort of strategic initiatives for that company. And then salespeople and account managers can use that information and really showcase that, hey, I'm actually doing my homework. I want to help you uh, to achieve and uh, make progress with that strategy. Then, so that's another, another one that is sort of uh, almost useful for any, any industry. Then there's lots of uh, uh, sort of positive growth type of events. This is something that many of our customers use. It could be companies when they announce that they go international, it might be some sort of acquisition news. Maybe they announced round of funding that obviously often means that they need to invest in new things uh, pretty quickly. It might be a change in strategy and so on. 
So there's lots of that type of um, uh, trigger events as well. Different type of investments, lots of uh, operational changes, winning new contracts, releasing new products. So all in all, up to 70 plus different type of trigger events. And I think this is the area where most likely uh, help from buy new account managers and our our consultants that that might be very useful so when you try out workflow triggers feel free to reach out we all of us we know these trigger events in and out and we most likely have good ideas what might be the most useful trigger event for you but really it's about selecting either tracking new companies that we detect or with known prospect selecting the trigger event that makes the most sense and you can of course use many of them then what's really new here is that you can now uh, select the destination as i showed you crm with very powerful uh, uh, settings and uh, connector capabilities on top of that there's a few additional things that we added based on initial user feedback you can actually also decide how often you want to receive these trigger events like only during business hours or a specific time each day and also if you have clear activity goals you can also select some limits so if you only want to have max 10 trigger events per day that's also possible or 20 or 30 because of course it's super important that we always act on these on these uh, opportunities that we create but this is an easy way to keep track of how many you want to see per day because if you have a big list of ideal customers there's of course lots of changes happening and if you just want to focus on the best ones this is a good way to make that make that happen and then then once you save those um, um, once you save those um, trigger events then you will see all the all the active workflow triggers here under active this one for example is hubspot type of um, target group and then lots of filters um, this one is tracking some key appointments when there's a new chief marketing officer new head of sales new ceo new account director in, in a certain group of companies it automatically creates uh, tasks inside hubspot and then sdrs bdrs it's super easy for them to always have lots of good opportunities the moment they walk into the office or open up their laptop when when working remotely uh, if you need to check the settings uh, in full you can always find them under settings so you can go to integrations so it's important that you connect your crm you can open up the same settings here uh, you always see Right away how many companies you have in your crm and how many of them have matched with vinyl companies you can see how well we perform for example here uh, 99 percent of the companies have matched uh, accurately in this account and then data mapping is the place where you define what information you want to include when you feed trigger events into your crm and also create deals and tasks and uh, sometimes notes but I have a few questions I want to ask from you. So I'll launch another poll. Let me see. This one is now paused so that we get a little bit of feedback. So what type of trigger events do you find most useful or you find, find useful? First one is new potential company found, detected. That was the one that I demoed then decision maker changes in existing prospects using financial reports in personalized outreach other corporate level changes such as funding expansion growth so these are the first one is super simple you just do it once and you're always good the other three you of course need to pick and choose the right trigger event just so that you get ideas from the others this is how it how it looks at the moment so 50 percent felt that automating new business prospecting is useful then decision makers and positive positive uh, corporate level changes are important and then 
every fifth or sixth also felt that using financial data is, is useful. Uh, how about what would be the most ideal way to receive these trigger events? It seems that we only have two options here. Let me see. You should see also notification to Slack and email notification. Good. It's then only my my view because I can see some notes going there. So when there's something happening, either we detect new ideal customer or trigger event among existing customers. This is how it looks and serve results. It seems that it's a task in CRM. That's also how we do it. We do not create deal or opportunity automatically. We create a task and when SDR, BDR then completes the task, it often converts into opportunity in the CRM, but we do not directly create that one, but it's also one, one option. Then um, I actually do have quite a few notifications that I, that I receive on in my, in my collaboration tools in, in Slack. Those are sort of like, I just want to keep an eye on certain companies, but I'm not always taking any action, but it's, you can sort of, of course, use both of them and then 15% email notification. Then the good thing is that you can actually try workflow triggers out for free. Let me see. So much screen sharing happening. Uh, so I'll do screen share. You should see my screen again. Since we're a little bit running out of time, uh, I'm not going to explain our process in details. Just want to highlight that when you're launching workflow triggers, make sure that you fine tune the searches a little bit so that lead quality is good and also that you. Um, keep an eye on the results and codes, the individuals who are actually acting on those, acting on those tasks. And then if you create tasks, it could look like uh, the following, for example, in HubSpot, there's companies and then key person appointments. And when you open up those tasks, you see uh, lots of good relevant information and it's super easy uh, for individuals to take action. But if, as I said, this can be tried out for free. So if you just go to winer.com slash workflow triggers, uh, you can try it out for free for 14 days. Uh, best case, you connect your CRM because then you can actually see it in the ideal destination. If you're in a bigger company, you don't want to involve CRM admin or sales ops. Of course, you can pick and choose other destinations and then you can actually try it out uh, for yourself. Super, super easy and, and uh, we're more than more than happy to help. Now we've used 30 minutes. I'm not going to go over time. First of all, big thanks for joining. I really hope that you feel that it was well, uh, time well spent, 30 minutes this morning. Hopefully you got, all, got some ideas and got energized. Big thanks for joining and then have a great week and good luck for closing Q3 uh, in style.